So as you've seen at the minute on the guide, Liverpool, we're trying our best to, to, to give you as much motivation as possible. As we enter January, the new year and the crazy things going on right now, we, we could all do with a little bit of a lift. Um, and the next guest is kind of perfect to do that for us. Brand new single out, Animal. It's out today and a brand new album coming out at the end of February as well. Uh, Lucy Spraggan, how are we doing? I'm all right, thank you. A bit cold. It's a bit chilly, isn't it? It is a little bit chilly. Oh, wow, it's cold life, let me tell you. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Last time I seen you was, was Liverpool Pride a couple of years ago. Um, right. Seen you perform a few times now. I've got to start by asking how much are you missing being on stage on, on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> well, I've been the first, I played my first show when I was 12 years old. So, like, that is... I'm, I'm 29. That's a long time to be playing shows. And this is the by far the longest period of time I've had without a show. And I normally spend eight or nine months a year touring the world. So like, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. And it's definitely, you know, it, in the beginning, it was really hard. I can imagine so many performers, you know, whether they're musicians, actors, whatever, who get that buzz from stage are really struggling right now and are really going through it. And there's a reason why I, run like half marathons and stuff all the time is because I think physically my body is was just like where are those endorphins like you you've you've been that continually having those endorphins your whole life where have they gone so I instead started started exercising a lot more and I, I've seen a lot of musicians doing the same thing you, you look amazing just on Zoom. You, you know, you look, you look fantastic. You've lost a lot of weight. You've changed your lifestyle completely. And you've you done that through 2020 when it was a really tough year for everyone. How did you do it? Tell us about, about your journey last year. Well, I'm really lucky to have kind of started before the, the pandemic, really. Um, I stopped drinking in 2019 in July. And stopping drinking really changed everything for me. And then... Um, before before this, you know, you hear people talking about stopping drinking. And before I stopped drinking, I'd have been like, shut up. You're like, that was just my life. That was all I did. Um, and I hate hearing people being preachy about being sober, but that really was the turning point for me. And I think it taught me discipline. So I learned discipline. And then again, same thing happened. My body was like, where is all the endorphins from getting drunk? And so I started running and weightlifting and CrossFit and climbing. And yeah, I, I don't know. It just changed a lot. Just, you know, I, I won't lie. I do drink, I think, quite a lot, too much um, some weeks. And I always kind of think about stopping drinking or, or at least giving it up for a few months. And then you kind of do it and someone gets in the way. And there's always a barrier kind of stopping myself. And I'm sure other people can relate to that as well. What is it? What 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 is what is the thing that kind of made you go? I'm going to do this and and do it. I was having quite a rough time in life in general. I'd been on the road for like 13 months solid, and my relationship was breaking down and stuff like that. And instead of approaching it head on, I would just drink. Oh, I need, I'm going to take the edge off. You know when you're like, no, and just put that behind there. And I would I would I'd just have a drink. Makes it easier, you know. But Every time you do that, you sort of bury yourself deeper and deeper and deeper. And I woke up one morning after a massive night out, like so much drama and I had a proper anxiety when I woke up and I just said to myself, I can't do this anymore. This isn't, this isn't living. And I stopped then. Um, and I can honestly say as, as absolutely hard, people make sobriety look quite easy it was hard. The first six weeks, I had no idea who I was. My skin hurt. Like, I was so emotional. But after that, it just got better and better. Talk us through that year with drink, because I do find it interesting, because I have toyed with it in, in my mind. What was it like two months in, six months in? Just tell us how you felt. Oh, like six weeks in to being sober is amazing, because you get these emotions. In this country especially, right, what do you do when someone has a baby? wet the baby's head you get drunk right what do you do when somebody dies you go to a wake and you get smashed and so when you get sober something happens and you're like oh I'm gonna go and and then you're like oh no I have to sit there with this emotion instead of like we we even cover up happiness you graduate you get smashed instead of sitting there saying I've done really well and I feel really great about that and do you know what the first time like you know playing a show I used to play a, a decent show. I had beers, get smashed. 
And then at the same time, you know, sadness. You have to sit there and go, oh my God. And it was awful. And now when I have an emotion, I know how I feel. And instead of having to think, oh, I'm going to drink my way into feeling differently about that. If I'm sad, do you know what? I just have to sit there and I've got to deal with it and I've got to change my mood. And then that's been the biggest thing for me, you know. Do you think you'll ever, ever drink again? I don't think so, because for me, I struggle with moderation. So it's actually a lot easier to just abstain than it is to moderate. And and that's that's something that people are kind of ashamed of. It's like, for me, if there's a cake in my house, you better know I'm going to eat that whole thing. So I don't have cake in my house. And it's the same with a bottle of vodka. Like, there's no beer here. Um, and it's just changes. There's changes to your life that you can make and only you can make. And that's that's what I did. That's what I finally understood. What would you say to anyone right now, Lucia? This week already has, has been pretty grim. You know, you've got to look at, at, at scenes yesterday in Washington. The pandemic has really taken effect now in the UK, right across the country. What would you say to anyone who's struggling a little bit this week and who wants to to change, you know, their kind of lifestyle right now for the better? Well, I think there's a lot of messages out there at the moment that are like, uh, Oh, just be kind to yourself. Eat that extra donut or have 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 loads of wine. There is a lot of promotion of like get pissed to make yourself feel better, but in the most authentic way. And I know it's really hard to get out of bed when you're depressed because I've lived in that my whole life, really. If you can get up and just go for a walk, like half an hour, get outside. I'm not even going to talk about the you know appreciating or being grateful because that's really hard as well. Just just try your best. Try everything to get outside. And that's my only advice. Get yourself out and about. And it does do you good. You know, it, it, you do see the benefits from that. we we got to talk about the new single, Animal. Um, part of the new album, which is called Choices, released at the end of Feb. Animal's out now. Tell us about this, because, again, this has got a really cool message for going into the new year. Animal is just like, I guess there's been a lot of prodding of me, right? Um, I'm quite open about who I am. And so there's a lot of my personality on show. So there's a lot of prodding where people think I'm sensitive, right? And instead of going, ow, that prod hurts now, I'm just being tickled by it. And so, like, you know, if somebody calls me calls me a name, that's what I'm going to be. So Animal is just saying, you're, you're right. I'm an animal. Like, call me what you want. Like, I will always be an animal. And, and the song is just about not caring. It's just be who you want to be. It's really feel good. It's really uplifting. It's it's got a little country vibe. Am I right in saying that? I mean, well, actually, this one I was listening to Bollywood um, workout Spotify playlist, which is what I do skip into, and um, there's this really amazing sitar line in it, and I I got the idea from actual uh, like Bangra music. So um, Bollywood, it's inspired by Bollywood, actually. Well, listen, check it out. It's part of that album, Choices. Animal is out today, so make sure you get downloading it. Um, loads and loads of talk, certainly last year, about reality TV, Lucy, and, and how much support and help is available. I think things will start to change for reality TV stars now. But what are your thoughts on it going into, into 2021? I think, um, I think the narrative, the public narrative has to change, and the fact that people that are like in the celebrity world or people that are on a pedestal, people seem to think that they're fair picking or that they knew what they were getting into. Um, Lots of people tell me I should be less sensitive or that I should get a thicker skin, but I actually think people should stop being horrible, Um, keep their opinion to themselves. Um, I tend to not really say anything unless I'm saying something positive. So, um, but that's just me. But yeah, I, (laughs) the, the help might be there for people, but really I think as a nation, we need to change our narrative um, on what basically my rule is if you don't think I'd punch you in the mouth for saying it to my face, don't say it online. That is a good thing. To, that is a good way to think of it because it's true, isn't it? You know, some of the things you read on Twitter, you think you never say that to someone face to face. I have never actually once once have had no twice twice there's two times in the last decade i can say that somebody was like rude to me on that level two times in in a decade and let's be honest like 
in real life, people aren't quite as bold, are they? Absolutely. Listen, Liverpool loves Lucy Spraggan. You've, pl- you've played many, many times in Liverpool. Uh, you're only around the corner in Chester. You know, do you get to Liverpool much? Do you socialise much in Liverpool? What do you think? Yeah, I love going on nights out in Liverpool. Um, some of my favourite favorite places to go out in Liverpool and loads of epic venues um, from the small to the big, like Leaf, uh, all the way to the Academy um, and the Arena. Like, I've played, I've played them all and it's, it's, it's an amazing place for music. It really is. And you know what? We're going to see you back here in 2021. Fingers crossed when this is all over. Uh, but, but seriously, get downloading that single, Animal. It's out today. The album is out very soon. Lucy Sprague, and you, you talk with such passion, but but you're so relatable and stuff as well. So thank you so much. And uh, best of luck. Cheers.